How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to 3 Tips and Tricks in Anime Studio Pro. The image tracing tool is a hugely important tool in Anime Studio. All you have to do is hit Ctrl Y on your keyboard and then you can find your image that you wish to trace. Once you have the image that you desire, you can actually start to draw on it. Now here's the best part. This image is not bound to any layer, so it's not taking up any space and you don't have to move it around. What you can do is you can then draw on it, and let me make this shape have a stroke so you can see. And when I put my shape over, so this is just a regular shape, when I put it over the tracing image, you can see that everything starts to fade out. Now this is really cool because now I can get really precise with my lines here, and I can see exactly how I want to trace things out and move my points around. Now in case this gets in the way, you can hit Ctrl U on the keyboard to hide your tracing image, and then you can hit Ctrl U again to bring it back. Now if you want to change out your tracing image, just hit Ctrl Y again and pick a new one. So it's that easy and it's a very, very useful and powerful tool that I use all the time. Blend morphs are something I've wanted to talk about for a while, so I'm going to take my time here when I teach this to you. I have set up an eyeball and you can say that this is kind of like a rig, it has its own masking element to it. When I select the ball layer, you can actually move this and you can kind of go around the eye. Now of course you can animate this just by moving these points around and that works as well, but I'm going to show you a faster way and probably a more efficient way later down the road. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing is we're going to hit Control K on the keyboard to make a new action. So we make a new action, let's call this, uh, we're just going to call this I1 for right now. So when we make a new action, it gives us a new timeline for something to happen. So let me bring my actions over here so it's out of the way. And now on this frame, I can move this position anywhere I want for I1. So let's move this one to the left. And let's not go all the way because eyeballs don't really go all the way. Let's just move it like that. So it's going to make a keyframe and I have them on Bezier. It doesn't really matter. So let's go back. Now we always have to go back to our main line first. That way we don't mess up anything. Let's make a new one and let's call this one I2. And then once we make an I2, let's go to the right. So let me select all and just move the points to the right, something like that. So that should be good for now. Let's go back to our main line and let's hit Control Shift B to bring up our blend morphs window. Aha! And now you're going to see these are they're grayed out at the moment, but you can see these sliders are there for our I1 and our I2. So let's go to frame one here so they're not grayed out. Let's hit absolute, because if we're relative to current, it's not going to be the slider we want. We want absolute. So let's go there. And now when I pull these sliders, you can see that it's going to animate the in-between keyframes for me. So all I have to do is hit apply. So right now we're on frame one. Let's hit apply and let's actually just get it going by making a keyframe here maybe. That should be good. And then let's go to frame 24. Let's say one second of animation, we want this to go over here, and let's hit apply. And there we go. So on the ball, it's going to make a point animation because that's what we did. We did point animation to transform it to the left. And now if we hit play, our animation is going to go like that. So if we go forward a few more frames, let's go only half the distance and let's go to I2, so something like this and hit apply. So you can see how this is going to easily add keyframes and this blend morphs are used for making mouths, they're making for making just simpler actions without actually having to rig up a character with bones, and you have this very easy way of just creating movement. Now, this movement isn't super fluid, but we can actually start to combine movements in the middle. So I can put this one to the middle, and I can put this one to the middle and hit apply, and now I'll have a keyframe in the middle there that kind of just linear interpolates it a little bit more. So there we go, we have that working. Now let's just look at relative to current and see why it's a little bit different. So here it starts at the middle, and now I actually have control over both, which is cool, but if we're setting up a designated, like an action, then we want it to just perform that action. We don't want to extend that action too much because it could deform. In this example, it looks like it's working pretty much perfectly, but in the long run, you're going to want to use absolute so you just have the action you desire. So that's it for blend morphs. Again, it's control shift B on the keyboard to pop up this window. And that is all I have to say about that. 
onion skinning is essential with whatever animation software you're using, so it's important that you know how to do it in Anime Studio Pro. What we're going to do is draw a circle or any shape, and I'm going to hit O on the keyboard to set my origin to the bottom so you can see this really clearly. Then I'm going to go to frame 1 and I'm going to hit M on the keyboard to bring up my transform layer tool. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to click on frame 1 and create a keyframe, and I'm going to go to 24 and I'm going to hold down shift and click and drag, and then it's going to create this line of motion. So you can see here, this line of motion has different little squares that represent the spacing of the keyframes that were generated. So what we can do with Anime Studio Pro's onion skinning is we can get a more visual representation of this line here. So what we're going to do is hit control L on the keyboard and that's going to turn it on. Otherwise you can just click this on right here and then you have some options that you can drop down. Just make sure outlines only is turned off. That way you can have some cool colored fills or if you like the outlines you could leave it on, but I'm going to turn it on to colored fills. Now underneath the playhead you have this gray box that is kind of clicked right here and you can see all the keyframes beforehand if you just click on other gray boxes for other frames. You can do the same for frames ahead, just like this. So now you have a better idea as to what the spacing is for your animation. So right here, I'm gonna click on this frame and I'm gonna create a keyframe and I'm gonna actually move this closer to the beginning. And that's gonna completely change our animation. And you can see that in these dots, you can see that they're closer together, which means that they're gonna be slower. And you can see that in the frames, you can see how close together each circle is as we go back. When you go forward, you can see how further apart they are, which means how fast they're going. So it's a great way to actually see the frames before and the frames ahead. Thanks so much for watching. I really do hope you found something new. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like on this video. If you have any questions about what we covered in this video, then just leave a comment below and I will be sure to answer you as soon as possible. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.